This lesson, we're going to be taking a few steps back and we're going to be looking at the event object and what's being output within the event object. So we saw that we can pass in HTML data and assign it to a value here of test. So let's also take the event object parameters and we're going to output them. So we're going to JSON stringify the event object and within the request parameters of the event object, there's a number of fields. So there's a query string, a parameter, there's parameters. So you can have multiple parameters that are equal to the same object. There's paths, there's lengths, there's post names. So there's a lot of information that you can pick up from that request value. So let's take that and use JSON stringify the object and whatever is passed into the event object, we're going to output it as a test on the page. So let's uh, refresh. And right now there's no parameters that are being output here. You can also uh, just pass it in as the object because we are stringifying it on the client side. So that will clean it up a bit and make it a lot more readable. So if we want to pass in some values, let's pass in a value of, so maybe if you had an ID of 1000, we would pass that in and we have a number of them. So first, and maybe this is a name or whatever. Uh, so let's pass that in. And now you can see within the parameters, we're getting the ID, we're getting the first, we're getting the whole full query string that we've added. We've got the context path. So we've got parameter, parameters. And the reason that there's parameters, so if we do ID equals 400, we also have ID equals 1000, it's gonna simply group them together within the parameters of the ID object. Whereas over here, we're just gonna take whatever the first value is. So if you do need to pick up multiple values within the parameters, then make sure that you're picking it up with the parameters. Otherwise you can use the parameter and output whatever the parameter value is. So now that we can pass that information and we can use it from the client side, from the request parameters, we can also pick that information up and maybe we can set the template. So if we passed in something like this and then this was the requirement for the various templates and we had a template of index or let's create a new one where we have an index to template and that will be passing in and the parameter of the e event object e parameter will be equal to temp will be equal to index two. So that's gonna be the template that we're looking for and that we want to output. So let's make a quick update here. And instead of setting and predefining already a set value, let's create a template value. And we're gonna use that same index and simply assign the value to temp. And then instead of having it hard coded, we'll make a dynamic option for picking up the parameter value from the request parameters. And that means that I should create and make a copy of this. And I'm gonna rename this to be index two so that we do have a result for index two that we can output. So in case index two is called like it is here, we have a value that we can output. And I'm just gonna update this to index two so that we know that this is another page and I'll take the index one. I'll remove out some of the content that we had earlier, that we worked on earlier, and I'll just call it index. And we don't actually need any of this, or we'll keep that in for now, because we are outputting it. So let's uh, try to make this more dynamic, where we're gonna check to see a value of temp, so whatever we wanna define the request parameter as, this is what we wanna look for. So let's have a condition, and we'll look for temp, and if you're looking for ID, it would be ID, and then looking within the e, e parameters. And again, you could go with the E parameter value, or you could look for the parameters within the parameters. So within E parameter, and we'll return back. So let, actually, let's do the parameters in case we wanna pass in multiple values so that we have an example for that. So we're gonna update the value of temp and reassign the value if it is within the E parameters and using the temp object. And because this is an array, we only wanna pick up whatever the first value is that's coming back. So let's try it and do a refresh. And remember, we do have a parameter here of index two 
and if we update this to index, it's going to return back the index page. And if we don't have anything at all, it's just going to default back to the index page. Or if we don't have a temp parameter there, if we have something like ID equals index, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to default back to the index page. So the only one that will change on the event object is if we use temp within the request URL and see the different parameter values that are available there. So there's more information, of course, available at the developers.google.com about this. So go ahead and add that and update your code. So now that you've got a dynamic way to be able to pick up different page templates within your web app URL, and you're gonna be ready to move on to the next lesson where we can start adding in pages. And as well, we're gonna clean this up a little bit.